Guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be going over the basics of beginner photography. We go over some starting from scratch, a beginner's guide on how to use your camera for the first time. Let's get into it. Like I said, I'm going to be going over the basics, the beginner's guide, starting from scratch. Even if you don't know anything, maybe you know a little bit and you need a refresher, but I got you. We're gonna be going over it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I promise you photography is not as hard as you think. Let's get into it. We're gonna be going over four things. Aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and a little bit of tips on what to get as beginners when it comes to beginners, photography gear, cameras, tripods, etc. Let's do it. First, starting with shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically how fast your camera takes a picture. When you hear that ching, the click of a camera, clicking that button, taking a nice clean picture, it's the speed of the ching of that click. You sh sometimes it can be like really slow and sometimes it can be really fast at rapid speed. Usually in beginner cameras, especially this one, the shutter speed usually goes up in four thousandths, which is really, this is the fastest it can shoot. It sounds about like this. Sometimes it can be really slow, usually on beginner cameras, is usually bulb. Now it might be confusing. What does bulb really mean? Bulb means the photographer gets to choose how long the shutter is open and release. Meaning, when I hold down the shutter button, I hold it down for as long as I want, and when I let it go, it'll take the it'll finish taking the picture now i just explained kind of what the definition of shutter speed is what does shutter speed even do shutter speed is how long the camera takes to let in the light as as much light as it can collect around you to lighten up the picture even more if i'm in a daylight setting and it's bright outside if i take a really really fast picture like a one out of four thousand one out of one thousand it's gonna it's not gonna let as much light in as there is in real time which is gonna make the picture look darker but if i'm in a lighter setting and i take a picture like around one out of 1.3 that's gonna that's gonna let in as much light or take a picture that more looks like what you're seeing in front of you not darker or lighter full circle shutter speed is the amount of time that the camera allows to let as much light in as possible. Next up, we have aperture. Here's how wide, small, and or small the lens is open to let light in. Now you might be thinking, well, shutter speed sounds a lot like, mission of shutter speed sounds a lot like aperture. It has a difference. Shutter speed, is the amount of time the camera takes to let in light. Aperture works with the shutter speed by opening and closing the lens in the, so the lower your number, like for usually on beginner cameras like this one, it's 3.5, F3.5 is the lowest aperture setting you can put on here. The lower the number, the more wide and open the lens is for light. So the shutter speed and aperture work together to kind of let, let more light in or let less light in. Like for example, up here, I'm showing you a picture of basically what the lens looks like when you have different aperture settings. For example, the f-stop of f over 1.4, see how it's a what much, lighter much wider lens and letting a lot more light in than for instance, f the f-stop of 8.0, it's letting a lot less light in less opening for light to come in than f 1.4 aperture is how much light is let in but also aperture is how much things in your picture is in focus for instance if i'm taking a picture of an object right in front of me with the camera and the rest of the background is blurry except for the one object that's right in front of me lower the f stop things that are closer to your camera lens is more in focus and everything else in the background is out of focus but if my aperture is very wide everything in the in the 
everything that I put in front of, right in front of my camera is going to be blurry, except everything else in the background. So it's kind of just an opposite right there. Guys, so I was editing and I realized that a lot of things I said I got wrong there. The wider your aperture, the less that is in focus in the background and more in focus in the foreground. When your aperture is very small, then everything is in focus, if that makes sense. So going all around again, aperture is how wide or small your lens is to opening to light. Also, what is in focus? The topic is ISO. ISO is how sensitive your camera is to light around you. But the catch is, if your ISO is really high, to be a lot more sensitive to the light and have a very bright picture like this, then sometimes it, your picture can be a lot more grainy than a lower ISO. Now, I'm not saying a grainy picture is bad because a high ISO. Some people, their style is just a grainy photo with high ISO, but me personally, I like to keep my ISO as low as possible so that my picture is smooth and clear and crisp as possible. I promise y'all find your style of photography along the line somehow. So when it comes to keeping your ISO as low as possible, like say, usually on these cameras, usually the lowest is 100. My ISO is at 100, it's gonna be a clean, crisp photo, and I like to use, to use a lower ISO when you're in a brighter, sunnier, usually during the daytime when you're taking a picture, during the daytime with a lot of light. When it comes to taking night photos, it's harder to use a lower app ISO but than it is during the daytime. When you're taking dark photos, like at night, of the moon, outside, light painting, which will be another video, but when you're having, when you're outside or something, usually it's easier to use a higher ISO because you want your picture to have more light into it so it's not pitch black. In my opinion, the, the brighter your setting that you're taking a picture at, the brighter the thing, the area, wherever you're at, wherever you're taking a picture, the lower the ISO is possible. And then as you're getting darker throughout the day, use higher and higher, higher ISOs. In my opinion, you should keep your ISO as low as possible. So circling back around again, ISO is how sensitive your camera is to light and how grainy or sharp your picture is. For the last topic, we're talking beginner camera gear. When it comes to picking out your first camera, my biggest recommendation is the Nikon V3 100. I will leave the links to all these things in the description below. But the Nikon D3 100 is an affordable camera that is reliable and great for beginners. Usually it comes with a 55 millimeter lens, 18 to 15, and it's a zoom lens too. And it's not very, and this camera is not one of the most expensive ones ever at all. And you can get these used on eBay and they're very good. I got this one used three years ago, like I said, and I started my camera journey, my photography journey three years ago. And then here I am now. Not sponsored, but the Nikon D3 100 um, provides beginner, beginner friendly settings, easy to use. And it also has a fun setting called guide on the spinner dial here called guide that can walk you through using your camera and how and if not if you're confused on how to use your camera going to the set going to the setting guide is a lot is gonna help you out and um, with all of the needs when it comes to taking pictures for the first time and getting used to your camera a lot of other beginner cameras out there but my most recommended beginner camera is definitely the Nikon D3 100 great beginner affordable camera comes to tripods you know keeping your camera steady especially when you're using those long longer shutter shutter speeds at night to capture as much light as possible a tripod is definitely a good purchase and a good investment when it comes to photography victive or uh the victive tripod it has this 
top to it that's really nice that you can attach your camera to and it has lots of levels and smooth operations and easy to use this cam this tripod is running around seventy dollars i think on amazon but victive also sells cheaper uh cheaper ones that are a little bit more basic and a little bit more beginner friendly they're around like 35 40 bucks you learned a lot in this video and more videos definitely coming soon on beginner how to find your uh, lots of other topics when it comes to beginner photography hopefully this helped you out hopefully it'll get you started with your camera journey stay tuned for my next videos hopefully this helped you out see you next video like and subscribe my